they just want to, like, you know, poke at Emily Co. You know? But I do wonder, like, is it, like, sanctioned research team? Or is it, like, a legal research team? Like, you know what I mean? That's what I'm, like, really... Oh, hello! Oh! Look, they're so cute! Oh! Oh, okay! Well, this is cute! This is, like, wholesome, right? I think so, anyway. Oh, this is sweet! So they're not, like, upset! That's good! Okay! Oh, well, that's good! nice they've been invited oh damn the tea is weak <laughs> oh that's weird so they get sugar cubes oh okay what if sugar counteracts the coffee somehow jesus what's wrong with her yeah what's going on with them jeremiah and jeremy okay they're like meditating or something. They're like lucid dreaming. I don't know. Damn, that's why they're in the research team. Ha, <laughs> Kate. But yeah, what if the sugar can somehow counteract the coffee? And that's why he gives it to them. But like, I don't know. Do they eat sweets? Like other sweets? Oh, no. Wait, what? What is he doing? Oh, I see. He's removing, like, the stuff, like, the face stuff, you know? Uh, what? What is happening? Oh, okay. Oh, damn. We sure want to be one of that, like, you know? I mean, obviously. I think, I think that Kate would be interesting in the research team. Oh, that's nice. Okay, maybe she's lying, though. <laughs> you know what I mean? Maybe she's just lying, but I don't know. Wait, what? See, she can juggle. Okay, listen. The circus vibes. I know that you guys thought that I was on, like, some sort of, like, I don't know, crack theory before, but, like, the, the juggling, though, that's not natural. You can't just do that. Oh, see, she doesn't even know. Oh, uh oh. Uh oh. Damn, he's so bad at keeping secrets, man. Like, you know what I mean? He's so bad. Oh, okay. Wait, who's Gilbert? Oh. Yeah, he's giving us everything, man. Ah, no. You're such as fuck, sir. You're giving her too much. Really? Why? What? Okay. Right. But Mary Rose is very masculine, right? See, look at this. Like, uh, okay. Mary Rose has masculine energy, you know? Exactly. And she's tall. So I'm not giving up quite yet, you know? I mean, I do have this theory that it's Christopher. Like, I wonder if one robe is Christopher, but then sometimes it's... Yeah, exactly. I wonder if sometimes it's Christopher, but then sometimes it's Mary Rose, I should say. Damn. Oh, see? Was his face name Anthony? That's not like... You know what I mean? I think that's his face. But he didn't do the naming convention. Like, was it Chris? Oh, wait. Or is Anthony also... No, wait. Did they say Christopher and Chris's face? What if it's Christopher and Anthony, like how it's Kate and Emily Co? Okay. But do you guys know what I mean? Like, is Anthony a separate person? Or was it Christopher as the person and then Anthony as the face? Or did they say it was Chris and Christopher, you know? And then Anthony's another person, like Anton and Anthony or something. See, what if the, did the robed person smell like something? Damn, oh, so they're smelling the perfume. This is so good though. This is such good investigative work. Yeah, I mean, did the robed person smell like something? Why? Oh, 
dear. She scares me. I love her, though. I actually really like her, but she's kind of extreme, you know? I think this is sus, man. I think that the sugar counteracts the coffee. Oh? D this is a secret, but really? Over? Why are you doing all this? You know, like... You're doing so much right now. Oh, they're so cute, though. I love them so much. Oh, I just love them so cute. I love Oliver and Ollie. Oh. Ah, damn. <laughs> I love that. Well, sort of. I mean, he broke down the bar. So... Maybe she's like looking nicely on on John now, you know? What's going on to you know what I was thinking about recently? I was thinking about Rob and Shirley. Oh, but that was cute. Oh, I love it. See, I love good, you know, solving a mystery, good old mystery time, you know? Oh. Oh, that's nice. Oh, oh, that's cute. I like this. It's nice to see them all again, too, because, like, you know. Damn, come on, Patrick. Oh, dear. If you help me, we'll tell you what we go, you know, do special training for. She could say that. Yeah, exactly. They all have to work together. Aww. Well, that's a bystander mentality, y'all. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> she kind of has to offer something to them. Oh, no. Kate doesn't know what friendship is. Oh, dear. You know, Kate should just offer to tell Patrick about the soot thing. And then, you know, like, I don't know what she can do with Louise. Oh, well, that's nice. Oh. Well, this is nice, I think. Oh, damn, nobody else does that? Jeez. Hey, that's rude. Maybe it's because of John's soot. It's different. Yeah, exactly! Damn! Oh, damn, I like that. <laughs> tell her what- tell him what's what, Louise! Oh, see? They're bonding. Oh. Damn. Oh, mixing everyone so- that's interesting. What if that's like, you know... If two soot had, like, kids or something, you know? Oh, that's cute, I think. <laughs> oh, well, that's nice. Oh. No. Damn. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Oh, dear. Oh. Oh. Come on, Shirley! Please! I was just thinking about them today. Oh. I was just thinking about them. Will they see the little thing that, like, was, like, running around the floor last time? You know, just, like, last time? Oh. Well, that's nice. See? Do you guys remember? Like, at the, like the last two episodes, it was, like, running around the room and stuff, so I wonder. Oh. Well, that's nice. At least, that's good. Oh, was it, like, the sit texture? do want to help. Oh, well, that's nice. Okay. See, this is sweet. Yay! Well, that's good. I'm glad to see their little friendship, little friendship things, you know, 
let's get into the discussion now and remember that if you enjoyed my reaction you can go check out the patreon to see the full length reaction and to support these discussions as well but we will just get into it right now i loved this scene ollie and oliver they're just so based like you know what i mean like i don't know i don't know how else to explain it i love them so much they are based i have decided i think that they are my favorite character now but they do do some suspicious things this episode which i think are super interesting but first of all something that i think is uh worth noting is like they could just be calling her like a super living doll just like for the sake of it if that makes sense like you know what i mean like just to keep up appearances but you know judging by how they like handle emily co it doesn't seem like that they know that she's human you know what i mean like i feel like that if they truly knew she was human and even if they were trying to hide it they would kind of like handle her with a little more care i guess but like they don't so i'm sort of wondering if ollie and oliver don't know you know about humans and stuff and like why would they i guess because like kate knew and then she told john and that's how john knows like this isn't like something that i guess the star bearers get as information necessarily right but i sort of had this thing of like well oliver and ollie maybe they uh, are sort of acting in a pursuit of knowledge and they're doing things that lord grandfather doesn't know about so maybe they would know like that they're human if that makes sense like just through i don't know science or something <laughs> science or something by kill and but you guys know what I mean? Like, that was the sort of theory I had, but I'm not getting that vibe that he knows that they're human, you know? And again, that could just be to keep up appearances, but I seem to be wrong about that, about Oliver knowing um, that they're human. But I do think that Oliver knows sketchy things. I think he possibly knows about, like, rebellion things or something, because there's something that he says, like, in this sequence uh, that we'll talk about. But you know, let's go through things in the chronological order uh, as they are. So Anna and Nancy, I get it. Like, I get where the name is, like, taken from. And so I'm just like, okay, sure. You know, it's like kind of like a Sarah and Mia situation. But, like, Christopher and Anthony, we'll have to talk about that. Because I basically have two theories right now. Well, really, it's only one theory. Like, I think that Christopher was the shadow and Anthony was the doll. Like, that's what I personally believe. Like, could it be that it's another shadow? I guess. But I think that it's, like, Chris. Christopher um, was the shadow, and then he named his doll Anthony, a lot like how Kate uh, named Emily Co. Emily Co. You know what I mean? That their names don't have... Um how do you say, like, a direct connection. I feel like that's why Kate, later on, like, she brings up this idea of, like, oh, like, is that another star bearer or something? Because, like, it doesn't imply immediately to her that it's, like, a shadow in the doll because it sounds like, like, a different, like, unconnected person. At least that's the impression I got from her dialogue. Maybe I, like, read that wrong. Like, I guess the other option is it's another shadow, but I don't think it is. I think that the the twist, if you want to call it that, is going to be that, like, Oliver was talking about um, Anthony and that was, like, Chris Christopher's like doll as well. But again, we'll get to that later. So I think that this is suspicious. And I would have to go back and look at all the times that they've had sweets. But they're doing this in the exact same way that they do the soot ceremony. And somebody made a very good point. Um, I think it was like on Reddit or something. Because if you guys don't know, like I go on the Reddit after every episode and I read the anime only uh, Reddit thread. I didn't do it for this episode actually, but I did it a couple uh, weeks ago for like the last ones. And somebody pointed out, like somebody asked basically like why cough? you know in particular like why not give it to them through some other means and somebody pointed out that like coffee is seen as like an adult drink uh, you know like even like I don't know how to say this like even in like real life right like it's like oh only adults drink coffee you can drink that when you're older like I remember like as my cousins were growing up they kind of had like an interest in like you know Starbucks coffee and stuff because that was like for grown-ups and they were always trying to like sneak sips of coffee like outside of like alcohol right like coffee is is like an adult drink and it's easy to like blend in the soot right and so with that being said if coffee is supposed to represent adulthood I would kind of say that like sugar and sweets and stuff represents childhood and I'm pretty sure that at the debut like I don't know uh, I don't want to say the ceremony but like before that like before they went into the maze and like actually did the trial when they were like ballroom dancing and like eating together and doing that sort of test I think that there may have been sweets 
And Emily Co. had said that they don't get sweets uh, very often. But back then, she wouldn't have been drinking the coffee yet because it was pre-debut. So I wonder, like, if the kids still have access to sweets. And, like, even if they do, this is, like, a concentrated sugar cube. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, this is, like, like sugar cube. Like, it's just sugar. Like, not, like, the sugar that you put, like, in cookies and stuff. So I do wonder if maybe this could be, like, a way to, to uh, lessen the effects of the coffee, basically, is what I'm thinking because you have that parallel um you know to the coffee ceremony and all we're distributing that to this now it could just be a metaphorical coincidence right like Oliver shows, you know, affection through giving them like sugar. It could be just like a metaphor, you know, uh, like a parallel to the coffee. But could it also be like the antidote, the antidote, the antidote, the antidote, you know, like the cure, the cure to the coffee. Anyway, and so that's just something that I've been thinking about, right? And obviously he gives it to the shadow too, but maybe he's given it to the shadow because, um, you know, that would uh, give it away if he didn't, if that makes sense. And then also like, just because like the sugar is sugar, it doesn't mean that it's not laced with something else. So is it possible that Oliver has made a cure to the soot sickness and he distributes that like through the, uh, how do you say, through the guise of it being just sugar, but then it's not just sugar. There's like something else, like some like herbal medicine or something in it or something like that. That's basically what I would say. Now this girl is super scary and I'm like, for what reason? <laughs> you know what I mean? Was there a reason? Oh man, I can't even like pan over to her eyeball over here. But yeah, like I'm like, was there a reason? that she's like so terrifying she reminds me of like I don't even know what character archetype this would be she reminds me of Annie a little bit from Attack on Titan but like I you know just she's a very extreme character I'm not sure what personality type she is. But then we hear like, okay, Lydia and Liddy, right? Like again, we're kind of getting the name thing reinforced, right? So I see like why after, um, after this point, you know, uh, Kate may be like, oh, is that another star bear? Like about Anthony. Cause you have Jeremiah and Jeremy, you have Oliver and Ollie, you have, uh, Liddy and Lydia, right? So Christopher and Anthony, like don't necessarily have that like explicit connection. But again, we'll go to that dialogue and see if that's like, you know, the case. So yeah, I wonder what these two are doing. Like, I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of getting sketchy vibes from these two and we'll talk about why, but I wonder if they're like not sleeping, but they're like meditating or something. They're like lucid dreaming, but I love the research club. Like, I think that they're so like, they're so full of character and personality. Like not to say that the other star bearers aren't, but like Susanna's just kind of scary, <laughs> right? And Barbara's kind of mean. I would say Barbara and Barbie have more personality. Benjamin, we know absolutely like nothing about him, right? Other than the fact he was like, like working out in that random room that one time that I was like, there's just like, you know, this empty room with like random like weight training and stuff. But anyway, um, and then, oh goodness, who's the other one? Yeah, so like, you know what I mean? Like the other star bears are just kind of like, eh, you know? And so I really like how full of personality uh, the research team is. And so see, this is sketchy too. Like it was in the basement of the main house, but then he was like, oh, it got too cramped. And I was like, but that is that true? Like maybe like they wanted to move out of the basement, like, you know, so they weren't like under like some sort of like uh, surveillance or like different uh, surveillance or something. I don't know. Or it could have also been because like there's been incidents in the house right because like it isn't the basement like kind of where like the soot pipes are right so maybe they wanted to move out because they were having trouble too with the soot monsters or something anyway I just think that this explanation on why they like move locations is sort of sus and it seems like that John is gonna be the one that uh fixes the the door uh obviously but I just really like this like while well, he's you know positive about the fact that they broke the wall and everything. And I kind of like, like the reference to like their engagement again. I thought that that was cute. Look at the look too. <laughs> look at the look on, uh, oh goodness. I think this one's Nancy, right? Look at the look on Nancy's face. Like, I don't think that she's mimicking. I think she's like genuinely surprised. Like, oh my God, people our age are getting married already. Right? Because I'm pretty sure that she likes Ollie. And so like, that's the thing you like, you know what I mean? And so I'm sure that that's sort of on her mind. Like, wow, I have, you know, known Ollie since we all were in the same debut generation and I've liked him for this long and he hasn't noticed, but Kate and John are already together. Like I could see that kind of being uh, her thought process, right? And I love their little like jealousy stuff because like, you know, Oliver's doing, or I guess Ollie is doing like scientific things, I guess. And like, you see the look on her face, she's like, no. And like, even like Sean's just like, like she's capable of taking off her own clothes. And I like Nancy kind of like uh, intervening right there. But it's weird because like John also undresses, which I'm like, I mean, he slightly does, I think, not in this shot. 
But anyway, and so yeah, so here's the thing about these two, okay? First of all, like, the eyes are covered, which is like anime 101, like, sketchy things are happening. But there's also some weird shots where, like, Kate is talking about, like, oh, like, who do you think, like, did the bads, you know? Like, who do you think is, like, the responsible for the Phantom incident? And they're in the background, and so even though I'm still on my, like, Mary Rose crack theory stuff, and I'll talk about why, I do think that, like, shots like that do tend to be foreshadowing towards something. And so, like, if I had to pick a man, <laughs> right? Because I'm so set on Mary Rose being the robed person, right? But if I had to pick a man, I guess I would pick this man just because of like the shots that uh, they've had. But yeah, and he gets to eat meat. So they're hearing more about the privileges, right? And so here's the thing about Kate. I can't tell whether or not she wants to join the research team because like she wants to or just because like they get the special privileges because she's like oh I'd like to see everything like is that just like for her investigation you know or like Kate likes things like that like is that true like does she really like things like that or is she just pretending that's the interesting thing right because I could see her liking things like that like it's not totally out of character for me to imagine but I wonder like what impression we were supposed to get as the audience like is she just pretending or, like, maybe she was pretending at first, but then over time, she's actually, like, has interest because she guesses, like, what one of the soot remover things is, like, powered by. Like, oh, these are, like, foot pedals or something. I guess you ride, I don't know, the vacuum like a bike or, like, power it through, like, foot power instead of soot or something, right? So, you know, it's, like, possible that maybe she has genuine interest, but I was wondering about that. Like, did I misinterpret it? Like, you know, like, which one is it supposed to be? Is it supposed to be that Kate's actually genuinely interested or, like, like not. So I would like to hear that from you guys if you guys know. So back to the Emily Co. circus theory. The circus theory is growing stronger with every day. I mean, like, again, this is a theory I've had since, like, I don't even know when, but it was sometime in season one, if you guys remember, I had this theory that, like, oh, you know, maybe she was, like, in the circus or something, or, like, in a dance troupe or whatever. But now I'm, like, so convinced. It was when we knew that Mia could read, but Emily Co. couldn't read. I think that that's where it started, because I was, like, okay, well, she must have been a peasant in some capacity, right? And so I was, like, going through, like, you know, employment options for, like, child Emily Co. and how she would have, like, some of these, like, acrobatic things if she was just, like, a peasant in the peasant class, you know? And so we kind of had this theory that maybe she was a farmhand and that, like, explained, like, her strength and stuff. But, like, you know, over time, this season, we've kind of settled on, like, circus theory because of the ventriloquy and stuff. And, like, this is definitely, there is no other reason to have this other than foreshadowing the circus. I will die on this hill. Like, I am so convinced. Like, I know that that's so random. <laughs> you know what I mean? I know that's so random. Like, of all the things that I could possibly, like, pull out. But, like, I don't know. Maybe I just have tunnel vision at this point that everything looks like a circus thing. But, like, the ventriloquy and the juggling and stuff, like, is it just me? So this is a sketchy thing about Oliver number one, okay? So this is, like, the first thing that he's like, oh, it's a secret, but, like, you know what I mean? I feel like he's saying this stuff on purpose so she'll ask about it and so he can tell her. Like, you know what I mean? Because he did this before, too. Like, well, you know, like, Edward is, like, on our ass. Like, that's not what he said last episode, but, right? Like, it's kind of a similar thing. Like, yeah, Edward's up our ass and he wasn't supposed to say that, right? And so I just feel like that he's doing it on purpose like it's either like he's uh it's just like an in-character thing that he has like loose lips like he's oblivious you know like not a gossiper per se but like he has no filter he's bad at keeping secrets like that could be a character trait but I feel like he's doing it on purpose like I feel like he wants her to ask about these things and I feel like that that's why he's like kind of not sus in a bad way but I feel like he may know more than what he's letting on basically especially about like the the Mary Rose traitor Christopher Anthony like whole situation I feel like he definitely like knows things right but this is good uh, to maybe have a list of. So, like, people with high soot output are Barbara, Benjamin, Gilbert, who I'm not sure who Gilbert is. Maybe I forgot. Uh, Kate and John. And so I don't think we've seen Gilbert yet. It's probably one of the boys. And then some say that Douglas and Sarah may be able to create scalatites, too. Which is interesting, because Sarah doesn't know her soot power. Or doesn't know if she, like, has one. I guess outside of, like, creating high soot volume. But we also know that you don't necessarily need a power if you have 
have like high soot volume. Like there's no implication that Barbara has like a levitation power like Kate does or anything. At least I don't think that there was. So maybe Sarah will be safe another day, <laughs> right? I'm getting so stressed about people not having their soot powers. But yeah, see, he's giving Kate a lot of information. Like I just think that that's sus. I think that he definitely knows more or like wants to tell her. It's not just like that she's like pressuring him. Like, you know what I mean? She's not pressuring him into saying anything. I feel like he wants to say all these things. And this is sus too, because like obviously, you know, it's hard to read expression because we can't see their eyes, but like usually like these sorts of shots in anime tend to be this character is lying about something, right? And obviously again, like we can't see their eyes or like if their eyes are covered or not, but you know, it's like the covering of the eyes or sometimes like close ups like that, it sort of depends. Like that can be an indication of like this character like knows more what they're saying. That's used uh, quite a lot. I think that there's a, a name for it, right? Um, but but he does think it's likely to be a man, see? And if he knows about, like, Mary Rose and stuff, maybe he's lying and trying to throw Kate off the trail uh, to protect her, and this is kind of like the guilty tell for the audience, right? Like, maybe he's trying to throw Kate uh, off of her trail because he knows that it's actually Mary Rose, because he knows things that have been going on, basically. He knows more. I'm not saying he's directly involved, but he definitely, like, knows about it, and he doesn't want her to get in trouble, maybe is the idea. And so, see, but here's the interesting thing. If he is saying this in earnest, right, um, he is basically saying that the door, like, there's a, a rational reason, because the door is heavy. Unless there were two girls working together, like the twins, it would be difficult to open. So, see, that opens up the possibility that maybe it was Mary Rose and Rosemary down there, because that could also be a piece of foreshadowing for him to say, like two girls, you know what I mean? Like, obviously, he's referring to the twins, but, like, to the audience, if we're already sussing Mary Rose and Rosemary, we know that Rosemary had all of the scorches, so it wouldn't be out of the realm of possibility that they both opened the door. Then, um, Mary, uh, Rosemary was infected on purpose, then they continued with the plan. Like, she walked back all the way back from, like, the soot pipe room. So it could have been both of them together. Or, alternatively, like, something that I noted was he was like, oh, well, you know, I'm pretty sure it's a man because, like, you know, for one girl to do it, it would be difficult. But, like, something that they have done explicitly with Mary Rose is made her very, like, masculine and very tomboyish, right? And so it could be possible that the two girls thing is a reference to the fact that Mary Rose and Rosemary both opened the door. Or, like, the, the, it had to be a man thing could be a reference or, like, a, a clue, I guess you could say, um, uh, to the fact that in the future we'll find out that it was Mary Rose and she's the exception because like she's just like a strong girl you know what I mean and so it could either be like both of those things could be like pointing towards foreshadowing for it to be Mary Rose uh, and Rosemary if that makes any sense. So they could have worked together, and so the difficulty of the door was uh, thwarted by there being two of them, or it was thwarted by the fact that, like, Mary Rose has, like, I don't know, like, a tomboyish strength, I guess we'll just call it, right? So even though he's pointing, I guess, Kate into the direction of a man, I think that as the audience, that's kind of a red herring. I do still think that it could be uh, Mary Rose and Rosemary and stuff. And so, yeah, then Emily goes balancing like she's on a fucking tightrope, right? And so, again... Hello, circus theory. So see, this is the problem, though. Or not the problem, but here's what is making me, like, waver from my Rosemary theory, right? Is that they didn't need to put these two in the background shot, but they did for some reason. And so, like, this could be a couple things. It could just be, like, decoration. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It could just be, like, oh, you know, well, based off of where they are in the room, they have to be in the background. Like, it could be to help prevent, like, a continuity error. It doesn't necessarily have to mean anything. But, like, usually, if I wasn't so hooked on my Mary Rose theory, I would look at this shot and be like, well, this is suspicious because they're talking about Master Robe, and then there's this new tall character that we've never seen before just chilling in the background, right? I would find that a little suspicious. So, even though Mary Rose is my top theory, my secondary theory would that maybe it would be this guy. You know what I mean? Because, like, he's in the background as they're talking about him, but maybe that's also a red herring, right? Maybe they're trying to make you think that because, like, you know, Oliver just said it was a man and that master robe is tall and that we've never seen these two before and they're in the background maybe it's supposed to make you think that it's them but it's actually still mary rose right 
So like, that's the thing. That's the only thing that is kind of like throwing me off. I'm like, is this a trick? Like, you know, or is this like actually the right answer? You know, it's making me doubt myself, but I'll stick by my Mary Rose theory, I think. Right, and that's the other thing about Mary Rose, right? Is like, you know, they're kind of looking now for like a tall man, right? Or whatever, like based off of what Oliver and like John said, but Mary Rose is considerably taller than Kate. And we see that like during the dance scene as well. So I think that that's sort of interesting that, you know, like they're all looking in this one direction, but Mary Rose also fits those qualifications, in my opinion, right? And so then they start talking about uh, Christopher, which here's the thing. I think that it could be both that like Mary Rose is the robed person, but Christopher was also the robed person or like is sometimes the robed person. It's kind of like that like the robed figure is not one person. It's like multiple different people using like this, I don't know, it's basically like this urban legend in the house, like this ghost story in order to like get around and stuff. So. I do still think, because I had a theory that it could have been Christopher, you know, and that his doll died, and so, like, he's just kind of roaming around, kind of like the opposite of, like, Shirley and Rum situation, right? But I still think that at least that one time, it was Mary Rose. Like, maybe at night it's Christopher, but that one time in the daytime at the coffee ceremony, I do think it was Mary Rose. So I think it could be possible that it's both, right? And so that's interesting, too, is that that's the one thing that he doesn't want to talk about. But Christopher and Anthony are the only topics that Oliver can't tell you about. And like, to be fair, okay, to like the naming conventions, like, like the, the Toth part and then the Anthoth part, I guess, like, you know what I mean? Like this part of their names are kind of similar, you know, for them to be like, uh, matches like a uh, doll and like shadow kind of like the others are, but like, it's definitely not as explicit. Like they don't, uh, you know, they don't start with the same letter. Well, I guess Anna and Nancy don't, but you guys know what I mean. <laughs> like, I, I think that it could be Kind of like a Kate and Emily co-situation where like Christopher kind of felt the same way that like Kate did about like naming the doll and everything. Like gave Anthony like his own um, identity in a sense, right? And so she says, Anthony, um, these things are secret, really. Who is that? Another former star bear, right? So it doesn't immediately dawn on Kate that Oliver's talking about the doll. And I'm assuming that's because their names aren't similar, right? But I think that's going to be the twist of the situation is that Anthony is actually the doll. And maybe like... You guys are like, but Cal, in the other episode, they did say that the doll was Anthony. Like, you know what I mean? Maybe I'm forgetting something from the flashback and you guys have been yelling at your screens the whole time because we already had this information and I just forgot. But I don't know. I feel like that we haven't heard of this before. So yeah, so that's basically like my theory about it is I think that like Anthony uh, was the doll. Right? And this is the first time we're hearing about Anthony. But even see, like, when Oliver can't answer her question, he still gives more information. So I feel like he wants her to find out and wants her to know. So I find that very interesting. Like, I just really think that he's, like kind of in on things, but he's in on things in like a third party perspective where maybe he gave Mary Rose something that would like allow her to do what she's doing, but like in a way that can't be traced back to him. Like kind of like a true neutral party is that he's not getting involved, but he definitely like knows what's going on or what happened before. And I thought that this was funny about like the bathing thing because Kate is like, but when do you bathe? And then she says it okay. Like uh, she says it again. She's like, okay, but when do you bathe? Like, you know what I mean? But I think that the perfume thing is interesting and I think that like maybe this could be um the thing that helps narrow it down to like Mary Rose and stuff because they have like a list and so maybe again that's hidden information from the audience but if Mary Rose is on that list I would definitely suss it you know I do think that this is interesting just because I would like to see like some clothes and stuff change up I'm pretty sure that the main cast is gonna stay as they are just for like branding and stuff you know like they all kind of have like signature colors and everything uh that are like very iconic uh, but I think that this is interesting because I think there's kind of the implication that like maybe Patrick like asked for that table or like kept to that table after debut because he was hoping that everyone would come back because not everyone has a big table like that that maybe this is like a hint towards the fact that like this is something that can be done and so Patrick like requested the furniture like specifically but I love this I just love this girl because she's so extra for like no reason and like so scary and I thought this scene again this was a more like 
comedic scene, so I'm not gonna go, like, through the entire thing. They also don't, uh, perfectly mimic, though, all the time, right? Like, she's, like, definitely, like, going in for it, and then the, the, her doll is just, like, arms crossed, and I know that they don't have to all the time. She's also not in face, right? So maybe that's also why, like, she doesn't have to right now, because I guess, like, she's busy, like, she's doing other stuff, but... I just thought that was interesting that one of them's definitely more assertive and then the other one's like kind of like standing like you know I don't know like just at the side uh but I think actually is their hair different or is that just like the side angle I'll have to look at her again it's probably just like how it looks from the side just because like you can't see the other bang uh because it like uh blends in with her face but it makes it look like like that this girl has two bangs whereas she only has one and that their hair is like slightly different I don't know that could just be again like at this angle it's blending in with the rest of her face but I wonder if that's also just like you know like the dolls like they try to be the same but like the differences are there like you know what I mean like the differences between like shadow and like uh dolls all are still like apparent you know as much as they try to like look like e each other like everyone is unique I don't know I'm just making stuff up you guys know what I mean right I don't know, maybe it's just I'm reading too much into that, but um, I just really liked this, and again, like, Oliver gives Emily Co. some sugar, right, like, you know, for helping, but I wonder, like, again, if that sugar could, like, have, like, anti-coffee, I don't know, herbs or something in it, right, and then they also all drink tea, which, I mean, that makes sense, because they don't have access to the coffee all the time, but it could be, like, you know, an interesting sort of uh, detail, but I just love how they treat Emily Co. and, like, how happy she is, it's just, like, super adorable, and it's like, oh, like, she's most welcome. And see, this is uh, leading into something that Kate says uh, later. Like, Emily Co. is, like, earnest and pure, and that's what makes people want to be around her so much and, like, enjoy her presence so much. So I thought that, like, maybe she got that idea also from this scene. Like, it shows flashbacks of season one, but I think this is also when she's realizing it a lot. That, like, Emily Co. can make friends wherever she goes. You know, even out of, like, these research team people that they've met for, like, five minutes. You know, they already love her just because of how she is, right? Anyway, this part is, like, them planning, like, for the midnight thing. I don't know if this is true, by the way. Like, there's no hidden side of her. I don't think that's true. I feel like that Louise would sell them out, you know, for her own ambition. Like, she's not mad. Like, she doesn't have any malice. I'm like, mm okay Kate like I don't know I, I'm still sussing Lou and Louise I feel like it's possible that they could like turn on them all in the future I think I had that theory last season but you know Patrick and Ricky I feel like that, that was uh, a good explanation and I think it's interesting to see like uh how she thinks of them I mean it's true like they couldn't have committed this crime like that's basically what she's saying she's saying like if nothing else like they didn't commit this crime right like Lou um or uh Patrick and stuff but like I don't know man I still think that Louise is kind of sus that's all I'm basically saying like I feel like that she may be the sus one out of like all of them and whatever uh but let's continue quickly I also really like like the little high five that they had and then Kate being like actually like you know it's fine because this is kind of fun like you see how much she's changing truly uh because of Emily Co. and I think that that's really nice so see like this is them talking about the table like it looks like it was put here just for us and I can't remember if Ricky uh or Patrick I guess I should say always had that table like since the last season or if it's like how do you say like if it's a new addition because we just learned that they can request uh, new clothes and like furniture um, and things like that also there's something about the skull I want to talk about because I'm wondering if it's like a Shakespeare reference <laughs> but again we're getting ahead of ourselves I do wonder like if Kate should have bartered like you know the information about the special lessons to get Patrick to help but like I guess that's resolved right like you know what I mean like now he's just helping uh, because Kate did show him something like about soot and, and stuff you know know not necessarily like what uh, I was thinking but anyway and so I thought that this was like very smart like oh they're just they're not gonna let them in on all the information yet they're gonna focus on uh, the phantom disturbance right and I just really like this scene. Like, first of all, you know, Lou and uh, Lou and Louise and then Patrick and Ricky have been kind of, like, absent uh, from this season so far just because of, like, the nature of what's been happening and things. And so I feel like that it's really good to see everyone together. I think that's why this is, like, my favorite episode. Did I say that at the beginning? This is, I think, my favorite episode of the season so far. Hands down, it's my absolute favorite. And I think this is why. It's just nice to see them all interacting. And I also like that, like... Like, you know, Kate actually kind of learned something here that I don't think she knew before, you know, because I think that uh, Louise actually
actually kind of makes a good point. Like, she's not treating them like friends. She's just, like, expecting, you know, them to, like, help her. And, like, she makes a good point, right? Like, Kate makes a logical point right now. Like, in terms of, like, what she's saying, I'm not saying that she's in the wrong, because she's definitely right. Like, think about the moment when that could fall on you, right? Like, we should all, like, work together, because if one of you guys need help from me one day, you know, we should owe each other, basically. Like, her plan is logical, I guess. But now, I think that I kind of, like, I see uh, Lou's point as well, which is why I think that the scene is so good, because you can see both sides, right? Like, on one hand, Kate's completely right. Like, it makes logical sense for them to unify together because this could be any one of them one day, right? And they all need to support each other and help each other. But on the other hand, that's more transactional, I guess, compared to friendship, right? And so I think that this was really good for, I guess, you know, making Kate realize that, like, it's not just about, like, transaction and survival. It's also it's also about living, right? Because I guess that, that's the crux of it. I think I just hit it. Is that, like, Kate's mantra or, like, her motto or her philosophy on things is, like, we need to do this so we all survive. It's just off of survival, right? But, right, there's more to life than just surviving, which is something I don't think that she really necessarily, like, considered, I guess, before this point, like, to, to its full extent. And so I think that's what she's realizing, like, my plan is perfectly logical, right? We all need to survive. This makes perfect sense. Like, why are you denying me? But I think that she's realizing that it can't just be about surviving all the time. It can be about friendship and having fun together. And that needs to be a uh, part of things as well. And so I feel like that that was like a good lesson, right? She's sorry for only speaking of difficult things. Like they should all enjoy uh, each other's company, right? And I think that's a very good lesson to learn because Kate is still right, like I already said. Like I definitely do think that she's still in the right here with what she had said previous to Louise, but Louise is also so kind of right too, you know? They want more than just survival. I think they also want like friendship and stuff. And so I think that this was like really interesting. And I also like the fact that nobody else makes soot men except for her, but like, okay, this is gonna be like a weird, like, <laughs> you know, the other episode when I was like, how do the twins know to make Emily Co. bark like a dog if they've never seen a dog before? I do wonder if the soot man thing is because like, like, I don't know. <laughs> You know, Kate has actually seen snow and snowmen before, and so why would they think to make something like that? They shouldn't know what a snowman is. Like, okay, I'm just wondering, like, somebody please tell me what knowledge of the world is it like, do they have implied knowledge? You know what I mean? Do they have, like, general knowledge? Like, there's stuff called general knowledge, right? If you ask me what a dog is, at some point, like, as a child, I saw a dog and somebody told me, and that's just, like, a general knowledge bank. Like, that's not something that, you know, you don't need a citation. <laughs> for that, like, on a paper or something. Like, that's just your general knowledge bank is, like, you know, what different animals are and things like that. Like, basic animals and whatever. That's probably not a good example for general knowledge bank, but, like, I don't know. Like, something like, uh, the, the color of the sky, right? Like, that's not something that you need to cite. Like, you go outside, you see the sky, you see it, right? And so I'm just wondering, like, what are the shadows supposed to have in terms of general knowledge? Do they know their animals? <laughs> Do they know what a dog is, right? Right? despite never seeing do they know what snow is despite never seeing it like do they know what a snowman is or is this actually like supposed to be a reference to the fact that because Kate has been outside of Shadow's house that's why she makes the soot men because she knows what a snowman is or am I just overthinking this but it's a dog thing that really got me you know what I mean it's a fact that they made Emily Hill bark like a dog even though there's no pets like there's no animals here so how the fuck do they know that did they read about it in a book like I don't know it's I'm just saying like, maybe this means nothing, but that's, you know, that's the first thing I thought was, oh, they don't make soot men because they don't know what snow is, and a soot man is based off of a snowman, and they don't know what snow is, or that people make snowman, or, like, any of that, you know, but... Anyway, I thought this scene was nice. I liked, like, them learning about, like, oh, soot has different texture. And so, see, there's something here, though, that I think is kind of, like, suspicious. And it's the fact that, like, when they mix their soot together, like, the soot has, like, a different um, consistency. They mix all of theirs together, and I think that's just, like, a metaphor. You know what I mean? Like, I think that's just, like metaphorical, you know, like, in terms of their friendship and everything, but, like, I do wonder if it's some sort of implication that, like, when shadows get married and have, like, you know, the stork brings them shadow babies or whatever is happening here, like, I wonder if, like, that's sort of the genetic 
um, I don't know, the genetic plan, I guess, for Shadow's house is that, like, the strongest shadows and the shadows with, like, you know, really good soot combine together and make even better soot. And that's something I talked about with Barbara. Like, basically, my theory for the situation with Barbara was that, like, Shadow's house is basically doing some sort of accelerated, um, I don't know, Darwin thing, right? Like, where, like, oh, yes, like, when you, uh, account for, like, the strongest traits or whatever, like, the strongest traits, like, survive and keep going, right? The, the weak mutations die off, the strong mutations are like, continue to be bred because they give advantages and stuff. You guys know that I didn't take science past high school, right? Like, I hope we all know that. Okay. And so like, with this in mind, right? Like, with my limited science knowledge in mind, my theory was basically that um, the entire experiment of Shadow's House is Lord Grandfather finding the shadows with the strongest potential of powers and soot output and like, good soot, and then making them re reproduce and then those shadows reproduce and that's how you get someone like Barbara where um unleashing soot is actually painful for her because again something that we talked about in like previous videos was the fact that um there's sort of like a a median I guess or like a gold zone I guess for like genetic mutations and stuff um you know if a deer's antlers are too big and like it causes them actual like pain and like neck problems and stuff like that deer's more likely to die like obviously like deers with big antlers again maybe this isn't true i'm just using it as a metaphor okay like deers with big antlers survive more and then those deer breed with other deer and then like all of the deer start to have big antlers but the problem becomes like if the antlers are too big and they're like you know falling out of their head or something because they're so big or they're like i don't know something like that or they're getting stuck in things or other things that can cause them to die like that's when the mutation has gone too far right? Like, we, we shouldn't, like, try to get, like, giant antlers, or else that can, like, uh, cause problems, basically. And so, what I was saying with Barbara is that, like, she's basically kind of, like, the, the too big antlers or something, is that they're pushing this past the bounds that it would naturally be happening, and now this amount of soot being in a person is actually, or I guess a shadow, right, um, is actually causing them, like, actual physical pain, right? And so, I wonder if, like, this, like, oh, if we mix our soot together, right? Like, mix it with Louise's and suddenly, like, you know, it's it's easier to manage. I wonder if that's some sort of, like, hint to the fact that that's how shadows are kind of newly made. It's the adults are combining their soot together to get new, uh, phonotypes? Is that the proper word for this? To get new, like, combinations of soot, and then those people have, like, different, like, soot powers based off of the adult, like, parent that they have. Like, I don't think it's, like, parent in a, a conventional way. Like, I don't think they're like getting pregnant, you know what I mean? I don't think that's uh, it, but I think two adults contributing their soot together, that's kind of like how they make kids, I guess you could say. And that could also be why some people, like Louise, have very similar powers, because it seems to be sort of divided into these categories of, like, physical powers, like, mental powers, stuff that we've talked about before, right? And so I think that that's just very interesting, that this could be sort of a hint to the fact that this is, like, why, I guess, Shadow's House exists. It's so, like, two people with, like, different soot types can blend their soot together and get, like, an even better child with a better soot type, I guess, you know? And so I just find that like, maybe it's a piece of foreshadowing. I'm not sure, right? Mixed together, they make a soot clay that's incredibly easy to work with. See, and so I'm like, mm, like, that's suspicious, right? Like, I don't know. I think that it's just a little sus. So here's what I was gonna say. Is this like a Shakespeare reference? Like, you guys know, like, you know, he, the, he's holding the skull. Not Shakespeare. I think it's Hamlet. Uh, I'm pretty sure in Hamlet, he holds up the skull. But a lot of people associate that with Shakespeare, obviously. So I sort of wonder, like, but why did you make that? Like, you know, it's time don't you think? Did Patrick say that? I think Patrick may have made the skull. And so, like, again, how does this man know what Shakespeare is? Like, you know what I mean? Like, how does he know these things? And so that's where I'm like, okay, if this was Ricky, I would say that that means he's from some kind of merchant class, like, background that was able to read, like, William Shakespeare. Like, you know what I mean? If it was Ricky making it, I would say it makes sense. But I'm like, what is the knowledge base for the shadows that, like, Patrick, I don't know, like, he knows how to make a skull and stuff like that. Like, if it's a Shakespeare reference, if it's not, you know? Okay, and this is, like, also sketchy because this could be foreshadowing, too. Because, like, she basically made, like, a scorch with a little thing on it, and then they say it's possible it could start moving, which sort of implies the fact that maybe, again, 
again, something that I said before was what if scorches are like shadow made and everything? Like what if a person actually has to make them and that's why like they can like shoot them out and everything. And so that's, it's actually possible it can start moving. That's like definitely foreshadowing, right? Or at least I think so, right? And then Kate says there's a way to make sure it won't move, right? And so she's even acknowledging the fact that it's possible that maybe they can move, right? And so I just think that that's kind of a hint to the fact that like somebody with a high level of uh, soot output or even just a level of control, like Mary Rose, could possibly, like, use their soot to make scorches in advance and just, like, let them loose or something, right? And so I think that that's uh, kind of interesting. Or, ooh, you know what would be fun? Okay, <laughs> not fun. You know what would be fun? If Barbara's soot output goes into the soot pipes, and then Mary Rose goes into the soot pipes and takes Barbara's soot and combines it with her own and then makes the scorches, right? And that's why they're introducing this concept of, like, soot combination. Because maybe Mary Rose doesn't have enough soot to be, be able to do that, like, on her own, right? Like, make, like, a bunch of scorches. But maybe she's, like, harvested some, like, from the soot pipes and then combined it with her own. And then that's how she controls the scorches. I don't know. That's, like, such a crack theory. Well, like, I, that's just something that I was thinking about just now. But I just thought the scene was sweet. And so here's, uh, I have a question about something that happened here, actually. Um, I do wonder... We know that the scene at the end of uh, season one, right? Or I guess the, the multiple scenes, the Edward kidnapping arc. We know that that was artificially created just for the show. So here's my question. And I guess like, you know, to the manga readers, answer this as vaguely as you possibly can. But when I saw this scene, I kind of wondered if maybe that scene with like little Shirley scurrying across the floor, do you guys remember that from season one? I kind of wonder if that was supposed to happen here. Just because it's the same location, it's the same setting, and they talk about Shirley. And this conversation, you know, this conversation's funny. I also like something that was a nice piece of dialogue was like, uh, you know, when John uh, had no creative skill or something like uh, Louise was like oh Kate is much prettier than that like they actually started to sound like they were friends that was just nice dialogue so I didn't want to get into that too much but Anyway, like about like Shirley and like rum and everything, right? Um, I just wonder if originally, like because they're talking about Shirley here and because it happened in Patrick's room, right? The little scurrying across the floor situation. I wonder, and, and like it was at this angle too, I swear, right? Like it like ran across like the floor, like from this door or something. So I wonder if originally was the little Shirley thing supposed to run through during this scene? And that was supposed to be the implication that she was alive because it always felt sort of out of place for it to happen in the Edward kidnapping thing because it sort of gave this implication that she would like be around and help or something and then she just wasn't. So I wonder if it was actually originally supposed to happen here but they just moved it and then they didn't repeat it because it already happened. Like you know what I mean? That they wanted to keep it there as some sort of like tease to season two like oh you know Shirley's not actually dead. Hmm. But like if they didn't do the Edward kidnapping arc I wonder if it was actually supposed to happen here originally and then that would make kind of more sense, right? So I just wonder if maybe this was supposed to be where that was like revealed and stuff, but they changed it because they wanted to leave season one on this cliffhanger of like, is Rum and Shirley alive? Like what's happening to them? But it would have made a lot more sense uh, in terms of like, I don't know, in terms of timeline uh, to do it right here now because they're already talking about Shirley. Imagine, right, if after this panel we saw, or I guess before, we saw the random Shirley thing running and then the cliffhanger for this episode was seeing like Rum like in the jail cell, like we kind of saw in season one, right? Like, that would be kind of perfect, I think, uh, for this, uh, scene, right? But I do like this. I like sort of their, you know, their bond thingy and, like, how Kate made one uh, for Shirley and Rum, obviously, it kind of implies the fact that they are going to come back and be part of the story and everything. But yeah, that's the only thing that I was sort of uh, wondering about was if that scene or that reveal was supposed to actually be here and not in the Edward kidnapping arc, because it would have actually made a lot of sense uh, for it to be here. But that is basically all from me, guys. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this discussion. Thank you for attending Kalaxon's Royal Court today. Remember that if you enjoyed, you should check out the Patreon to get the full-length reaction as well as just support these in general, you know? Like, Shadow's House isn't the most popular anime, but I enjoy doing it every week, and so that's why I do it. And so if you guys want to give a little bit of support in that way to kind of ma make up for that, I guess, 
Like, you know what I mean? Like, these aren't getting, like, giant view numbers, but I'm doing it because I enjoy it. So if you want to help out with that, uh, you can check out the Patreon. But otherwise, I will see you guys next week as always. I hope you had fun, and I will see you later. Bye!